Here's a second example of multi-loop circuits and an example that also involves calculating power in an electric circuit. So we have a circuit diagram that contains a battery with an EMF of 25 volts that delivers 25 watts of power. The battery delivers an unknown amount of current that is less than 2 amperes. How much power does the unknown battery deliver or use? First things first, we copy down the circuit if we're doing it from a textbook. If you're doing it on a test, you are going to scribble all over that diagram that they gave you. So I copied it here, and I also named my junctions A and B, and that's going to help uh, clean up my presentation and explain to other people what I'm trying to do and how I'm solving the problem. The first thing that I'm going to add to my diagram is the current delivered by the first battery that I'm going to call I1. I know that the battery is delivering power to the circuit, so I know that the current is going to leave the plus side of that battery. I'm going to also draw I1 on the branch on the right hand side and I'm going to indicate the places of high and low potential on my two resistors. So remember in a resistor the current flows from the place of high to low potential. And for a battery the places of high and low potential depend on what's actually going on inside the battery. So you have to pay attention to where the plus and the minus signs are. The general definition of power is potential difference multiplied by current, and that's going to help us figure out what current is being delivered by our battery. If I count potential differences from right to left, you see that we go from a place of high potential to low potential across the 5 ohm internal resistance of the battery, and then we go from the minus sign to the plus side of the EMF of the battery. So in terms of counting potential differences, that's minus IR plus E to give us the voltage across the battery multiplied by I, that's the current being delivered by the battery. And those two numbers multiplied together should be 25 watts. Let's plug some numbers in. My internal resistance is 5 ohms when it gets multiplied by the current and again by the current I get minus I squared times 5 then my EMF gets multiplied once by the current so that explains my plus 25 I and I subtracted the 25 watts on both sides so that I have minus 25 on the left and the whole thing equals to 0 on the right. Well that's a quadratic! We know how to solve quadratics! If we think about the traditional form ax squared plus bx plus c, my a becomes minus 5, my e is plus 25, my c is minus 25, and then I can use the formula minus b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. The two solutions are 1.38 amperes or 3.62 amperes. And we were told that that first battery didn't deliver more than 2 amperes, so we know that we have to choose the first solution. I can use that current to calculate the potential difference between my junctions A and B. So I'm going to calculate VA minus VB, and that means that I'm going to start at point B. Point B is going to be my initial point, and I'm going to add up all the voltages until I get to my final point, point A. The potential difference across a resistor is going to be R times I. Starting from point B, I'm going from high to low across the 5 ohm resistor, so downhill, that justifies the negative sign, and then from high potential to low potential, so minus again across the 5 ohm internal resistance, and then from minus to plus, so uphill, across the 25 volt EMF. The potential difference between points A and B is 11.2 volts. The fact that this number is positive tells us that A is at higher potential than B, and so the current is flowing from point A to point B. So I can add my second current flowing from A to B, and I'm going to indicate the places of high and low potential at the ends of the two 10 ohm resistors.
Now as I'm doing the problem, I'm going to keep adding stuff to my diagram. So I'm going to leave it in the corner of the page and I'm going to keep solving and I'm going to keep adding stuff to it and then at the end I'll show you what my complete solution looks like. Now that I know the potential difference between points A and B, I can figure out how much current is going through that middle branch. I can figure out what current I2 is. And for that, I'm going to use Ohm's law. So V is equal to IR is going to be rearranged into V over R is equal to I. And 11.2 over 20, which is the total resistance of that branch, is 0 0.56 amperes. So let's think about what's happening at junction A. There is 1.38 amperes going into junction A, and I know that in the middle branch I have 0 0.56 amperes going out of junction A. That means that whatever current is left over has to leave junction A also. And 1.38 amperes minus 0.56 amperes is 0.82 amperes. What I'm going to do now is add I3 to my drawing and add the place of high and low potential across the 10 ohm resistor that is in the bottom branch of my circuit. To figure out the potential difference across the battery, I'm going to use a loop rule. Now when you're doing a loop rule, you should always indicate on your diagram which way you're counting voltages. I'm also going to guess the place of high and low potential at the ends of my battery. This is completely arbitrary. If I've guessed wrong, the number will come out negative and I will fix everything in the end. If I start at point B and I go around, I go uphill across my 2 10 ohm resistor. So 2 times 10 ohms times 0.56 amperes is 20 times 0.56. Then I'm going from high to low potential across the 10 ohm resistor in the bottom branch. So minus 10 times 0.82. Then I've guessed that I would go from high to low across the battery. So I'm going to subtract the potential difference across the battery. And that whole thing brings me back to B. So the potential difference from B to B should be zero and I find that the potential difference across my unknown battery is 3 volts. This means that the battery is using energy because the current in my bottom branch is going counterclockwise. So the current is going into the place of high potential of the battery. If it's a rechargeable battery, well then this battery is getting recharged. The power used by the second battery is going to be given by the potential difference multiplied by the current and I get 2.46 watts of used power, or 2.5 watts if you're looking at two significant figures, which was the correct number for this problem. If that confused you a bit, here's a quick check. The first battery delivered 25 watts. Then I calculate the power that's being used by the resistors by adding up the resistances multiplied by the current through them squared. So in the top branch, I have a 5 ohm resistor through which there's 1.38 amperes. In the middle branch, I have a total resistance of 20 ohms through which there's 0.56 amperes. And in the bottom branch, I have a 10 ohm resistor through which there is 0.82 amperes. That is 22.5 watts of power being used by the resistors. If the first battery delivers 25 watts, and the resistors use 22.5 watts, that means that the second battery has to use 2.5 watts. And this is what the whole solution looks like. Spread the joy of physics!